next slide talks about a procedure called CK, which is, which is standing for conductive keratoplasty. It's just a radio frequency treatment that we do. We use radio frequency waves to steepen the cornea. And what that's going to do is it's going to allow people to read again. So if you've had LASIK and you then decide you can't stand your reading glasses as you get older, you can come back and we can do CK. Now, the best way for me to discuss LASIK is for, for you all to think about an analogy here. Think of this cornea like it's a book of 500 pages thick, okay? And what we're doing is it's two steps LASIK. The first step of LASIK is we actually create a flap in the cornea, so it's like opening a book, okay? And literally to page 100. So the cover of the book plus the first 100 pages gets lifted back. And then in the second step, we're going to remove pages of the book, okay? So and depends on how bad your eyes are. If your eyes are very, very bad, we're going to remove more pages. If your eyes are less bad, we, we have to remove fewer pages. And then we close the book down. Okay, so it's a two-step process. And this flap will seal and heal, okay? And it sits in the, in the cornea like sort of a manhole cover, sits into a manhole. And, and you can take a three-hour nap, wake up, and see. And that's what has made LASIK so popular is the fact that um, it's a quick healing procedure. The next day, you're usually back to work. Okay, so at this point, um, usually the patients are sitting, sitting there thinking to themselves, I see how you made the flap, and it looked really easy as you lifted the, the uh, flap with this little model, but how in the world do you do it with, with the procedure? And so uh, there, are, there have been two ways to make the flap over the course of time. Um, the first was with the mechanical device called the keratome, a belated procedure, okay, which um, we don't use anymore. So uh, for the last, I guess, six years, um, I've been using a procedure called intralase, which is a laser to create the flap. So that, this was one of the biggest advances in our industry over the last decade. And so um, we no longer have to use a metal keratome that has a blade run across the cornea and cut the flap. We use a laser. The laser has um, revolutionized our procedure because it's much, much safer. What we're basically doing is we're making a finer or a smaller footprint or imprint on your eye because we can make thinner flaps, thinner profile, and it's a more secure procedure for you long term. So it's not as aggressive. It's not as, we don't have to make as deep of a cut, okay? And we can tailor it to everybody's individual needs based on the size and the shape of that particular eye. So the intralase, I could literally spend an hour talking to you about the clinical improvements that this has given us, okay? But we don't have the time to do that, but I'm going to just give you a few. It's obviously blade-free, which means um, it drops the complication rate dramatically. Okay, we don't have to rely on gear-driven devices any longer. It's 100 times more accurate. We can make uh, thin profile flaps with this device. Um, it lowers the risk of dry eye dramatically, which is something that we used to struggle a little bit with in the older technology. And it lowers our enhancement rate. Now, to describe what an enhancement is, an enhancement is a second treatment, basically, to tighten up the first outcome. So think about it like a golf golf ball or a golf player. You're on, a, on the golf course and you're making a putt. The ball rolls really close to the hole, but it doesn't go in the hole. So the surgeon or the golfer has to do a second putt, right, to get the ball in the hole. Um, the cost of that second treatment is covered forever with what we have is called a lifetime commitment from TLC. And the good news about that is we have multiple centers around the country. You can go visit any one of them and then have a second treatment if you ever need one uh, at no additional cost. The other good news about enhancements is we don't do a lot of them. Okay? The average uh, laser center reports somewhere between 5 and 15 percent of patients having enhancements in the United States. And my enhancement rate currently with our technology is under 1 percent. So we have a very low enhancement rate here, something that we're proud of. It's, it's one of the things that, you know, um, drives our business, happy patients, good outcomes, and not having to have second procedures. However, having said that, again, the game of golf, if it's a 60-foot putt, you must imagine that the patient is going to have a second treatment at a greater likelihood or greater risk than the two-foot putt. So based on your prescription, if you're a 60-foot putt and your eyes are horrible, then you're going to have a greater chance of needing that second treatment. Most people are happy with 2020 or better. There are, there are other patients who are happy with 2025 vision if they end up with 2025 vision. Driving vision is 2040. Most people are, are not going to be happy if they're at 2040 or worse. 
Um, and, and if the patient's unhappy at 2030 or 2025, we'll do an enhancement also. But most of our outcomes are in the 2020 or better range. Okay? So um, intralase allowed me to drop my enhancement rate from around 5% to under 1% now. Okay? So it's one of those things that has helped us um, uh, make this a more accurate procedure. Okay? Now, it can never be zero, the enhancement rate. And the reason it can never be zero is because we're operating on human tissue, human cornea, which has to respond to the laser energy. So there's going to be patients who either respond a little more to the laser energy or respond a little less to the laser energy than we predicted. And those patients are going to be close to the hole, and then we're going to have to go back and zap them again. Okay? And those are simple procedures. They only take a few minutes to do if you have to have them. Now, some of you in, in this room may not end up being LASIK candidates, and we may end up telling you that you're a PRK candidate, which is another laser treatment that we do here. Um, PRK is what the military had approved years ago. It was actually the first procedure. It preceded LASIK, and, and then LASIK came about, so PRK fell out of favor a little bit, but PRK has been making a big um, comeback over the recent years uh, for some safety concerns. And the military, um, since, since they originally approved PRK, has come back and approved LASIK, as long as it's done with the intralase, for their personnel as well. So they've tested it, and they've, they've now think, they think that LASIK, same with NASA, uh, they believe that LASIK with intralase is safe for their personnel. But still, about 15% of people that we see are going to be PRK candidates, because we find it for some individuals, for those particular people, to be a safer procedure. And that's because some of you are going to have thinner corneas than, uh, than average. So remember I talked about the book of 500 pages. Well, let's say your cornea is only 460 pages, okay? And that would be a thinner cornea. And we're talking in terms of pages, but in real reality, it's microns, okay? So instead of 500 microns, it's 460 microns. So the math doesn't work out. Even with my intralase, I can't make a flap thin enough to leave enough behind for safety and security long term. So what we'll do is we'll do the PRK treatment, which is right on top of the cornea. Okay? So this is like removing the first 50 pages of the book, as opposed to the middle 50 pages of the book. Okay? So it's the same outcome. We still thin the cornea by the same amount, but we took the, su the surface of the cornea off, and that has to heal back over the course of about four or five days, during which you're sleeping in contacts, um, and, you know, we, we put them in, we take them out four days later when the surface has healed back together, and then you slowly get better and better and better to the exact same LASIK outcome that any LASIK patient has. So it's the exact same visual results, it just takes you longer to get to that goal line. And, and so we offer PRK for, uh, for patients as well, and like I said, about 15% of patients have this done. Okay. Now, we have two of the very, very best lasers in the industry here. One's called the Allegretto Wavelight, and one's called the Vizex Custom View Star S4. And so how do we determine which of these, are, which of these we're going, going to use? Well, what we're doing is we put you at a machine that looks like this, and we shine a light into your eye, and a wave of light comes back at this machine, and it digitizes a wave. So this wave of light is now describing your vision, okay? Now this is more descriptive than your eyeglass prescription. So, you know, for instance, before these treatments existed five years ago, if you had come in this, into our office and all of you in this room wore the same pair of glasses, okay, you would then all have the same laser treatment, okay? We would just program the laser, minus three or whatever your glasses were, and you'd all get the same treatment and go home, and you'd do pretty well. But scientists found that there's more to our vision than just your glasses prescription, and this is it, okay? This is called the wave scan. And, it, and it, what it's describing is higher order aberrations in your eyesight. So now, if all of you wore the same pair of glasses in this room, not one of you would have the same treatment. Because the mapping that we're using to drive the lasers is, uh, is more intense information. It's more information than just your glasses prescription. And this is called custom treatment.